Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the grand final of Clutch Chess International 2020. Of course, Magnus Carlsen against Fabiano Caruana. Uh, 12 games, uh, Magnus Carlsen, he's rapid ranking 2881, number one in the world. He is also world champion in the standard time control, rapid time control and of course blitz time control as well. Uh, so definitely number one and he is 29 years old grandmaster from Norway. His opponent Fabiano Caruana, Italian American, uh, for now it's holding uh, American passport and play for USA team. Uh, his rapid ranking 2773, number 11 in the world in rapid, but number two in the standard time control. And he is 27 years old. And this is game number one. And it's very, very interesting from very beginning. And this is why I would like to show you that game. Magnus. Carlsen plays as white and he opened with c4 so English opening uh, not like like I suggested like f3 and, and king on f2 not this kind of bank load but look at this look at this uh, don't think you know I try to cheat you this is real Magnus Carlsen play f3 and king on f2 in move 6 and 7 so look at this in the English opening we have e5 knight on c3 knight on f6 G3, so uh, pretty the same like uh, we had the, just in the last game uh, when Levon Aronian play with Magnus Carlsen. We have Bishop on B4 and now E4. E4 by Magnus Carlsen and now Bishop takes on C3, that's main line and here Magnus deviates, don't take D takes on C3 but rather B takes on C3 with the idea of D4 and create the very strong pawn center. And now here is the question, can Fabiano Caruana take on E4? Is it even possible? The answer is, this is move number five, so definitely it's the, still the theory. And uh, what would happen? After knight on e4, queen g4, okay? Winning the knight or winning the pawn and you cannot defend. If you try something like knight on g5, then f4, uh, e takes on f4, g takes on f4. And yes, you can defend this for the moment, but after f5, you're gonna lose this pawn, finally. There are, of course, uh, any other lines and yes, queen can come to h4, but after king on d1, there are no more threats and black gonna have the problems uh, also with development on the king side. Uh, definitely uh, taking on e4 is not a really great idea here. Uh, we have castle by Fabiano Caruana. Now this is the, the issue. So uh, usually uh, bishop on g2 is played here as this is just normal move in this position. However, Magnus Carlsen starts his bonk load now. F3 f3 and this is complete novelty it wasn't played in the in the top level yet we have rook on e8 and now king f2 moving the king and everybody in studio is like what the heck in commentary like what what is magnus doing this is you know move number seven he's moving his king he don't castle uh his pieces are undeveloped what what is he doing uh, we have c6 by Fabiano Caruana, d4 fighting for the center and now d5. So what Fabiano Caruana tries to do now is the open the center uh, and attack and the king. Can he succeed with that? Uh, we have c takes on d5, c takes on d5, d takes on e5 with the attack on the, on the knight. So rook takes on e5 and now c4 by Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and what to play as black? There are a couple of interesting options. So, for example, if you try something like knight on c6, uh, which doesn't look good, but after uh, c takes on d5, black actually could sacrifice um, the knight for two pawns, central pawns, very dangerous pawns, and try to play against the king. For example, this way, uh, let's say queen on b3, and uh, it's unclear how to attack the king. Uh, it's definitely possible to do it, but white can develop with the with the bishop on c4, knight on e2, king can move to, to g2. Uh, this bishop can also easily be developed, for example, to f4. So white should be, should be okay here, uh, but definitely that would be very, very sharp position. Also, queen on b6 looks very, very interesting, but after bishop on e3 and queen 
queen on b2, uh, white actually can play queen on d2, uh, exchanging the queens. Uh, however, uh, it's very interesting variation with the, uh, with taking the, the rook, because why not to take the rook for free? The problem is uh, bishop on d4 trapping the queen, and the queen have to be exchanged for the rook and, uh, and the minor piece. If, if queen on b1 trying to escape this way, it's not possible. Bishop d3, and look at this, all of these squares are actually... Uh, are actually controlled somehow for, for, for everything. So uh, it's not possible. So queen on d3 and now white stands uh, definitely better. Uh, but it, it was also a very interesting uh, trap for the queen. Uh, however, Fabiano Caruana goes for d4. So he wants to make, create this passed pawn, which can be in some variation very, very annoying. We have knight on e2 attacking this pawn immediately by Magnus Carlsen, knight on c6 defending and now knight on f4 heading to uh, d5 and this is gonna be very very beautiful outpost for the knight can you imagine better one the the two pawns defending this this knight is just beautiful if it's taken then of course uh, white gonna have the protected past pawn so knight on d7 now preparing some moves like f5 and now knight on d5 as planned and here f5 was possible immediately for example e takes on f5 rook takes on f5 f4 and now this knight has support only of one pawn so so that would be quite okay for black uh, however we have rook on e eight by Fabiano Caruana now bishop on f4 bringing the control for example to e5 now controlling this diagonal and knight d on e5 and this knight can be pretty annoying here so uh, Magnus Carlsen um, exchanged that so we have bishop on e5 and now rook e5 uh, and here bishop on d3 supporting both of the pawns from behind and blocking the passed pawn and now Fabiano don't go for rook on e8 again, uh, because that would be, as I said, f4, uh, and then queen on h5 is coming, uh, e5 is coming, and uh, that could be, you know, uh, pretty dangerous. So uh, f5 immediately now, uh, and now rook on e1 by Magnus Carlsen, so he don't bother to take this pawn. Uh, we have f takes on e4, and here Magnus Carlsen... Uh, was thinking for about four minutes uh, and both players were uh, like seven minutes on the clock uh, and here Magnus spent more more than half of his time more than four minutes and he took with the bishop uh, at the end he, he decided to take with the bishop now queen can come for example to d3 uh, with the attack on h7 but Fabiano Caruana immediately answer bishop on f5 we have bishop on f5 rook on f5 and now f4 so very similar uh, position uh, black could reach just you know couple of moves before we have queen on d7 and now rook on b1 rook on b1 uh, it's not you know uh, attacking b7 i mean it's looking at b7 but of course it's protected uh, the idea here is bring the rook uh, to the open e file double the rooks and then play on the e file we have rook a on f8 so uh, now maybe some ideas like g5 could be on the air but magnus plays a king on g1 he could go for king on g2 which probably would be better uh yasser seravan was very very shocked like why not king on g2 because if i play king on g2 then this queen for example never can reach h3 uh but magnus went for king on g1 and now this is this is possible of course not now uh but in the future why not we have rook from the fifth rank to f7 and now rook on b2 so magnus carlsen continue his plan uh, and now he has less than two minutes and fabiano caruana still six minutes on his clock uh, rook on e8 asking for exchange the, the rooks but we have rook uh, b on e2 and here of course uh, black could exchange the rooks uh, and that would be the position however we have rook f on f8 by fabiano caruana so fabiano caruana is waiting he doesn't have good active moves so he has to wait and and uh, and see what magnus carlsen gonna play we have a4 so magnus first uh want to uh, make this pawn meaningless on the queen side like black doesn't have any counterplay on the queen side before he starts to attack on the on the king side and now queen on f7 queen on d3 uh, and now rook 
rook on e2, queen on e2 and rook on d8. Maybe, maybe with some ideas like a5, knight on b4, you know, uh, removing this annoying uh, knight. This knight has a really great outpost uh, and watching, you know, at the position uh, all the time. So it's you know it's it's always good to remove the 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 outpost like this if it's possible of course we have queen on e4 now uh, so preparing some moves like f5 uh, maybe then g4 h4 uh, and making king attack on the on the king side so fabiano decide for g6 to to put some control on f5 uh, and now we have g4 by magnus carlsen king on f8 king on f2 uh, king on g7, king g3, and now king f8. And that means Fabiano Caruana doesn't have plan, uh, and this is his position, and he just doesn't see any good moves here. Uh, and uh, and Fabiano spent quite a lot of time here, and he already have like two minutes on his clock, uh, while Magnus Carlsen still have uh, you know one minute, so so much less. Uh, but here Magnus started to blitz. He has you know the plan what to play, and Fabiano still try to find some active move. Uh, now H4 was of course possible, but Magnus want to play H3 first. Uh, and now a6 and and the grandmaster in studio said whenever you are in the position like that this is one of the principles like don't move your pawns if you move your pawns you create new weaknesses just move your king go and back and wait what, what your opponent is gonna do uh, but we have a6 uh, and here Magnus Carlsen play king on f3. We have king on g7 and finally Magnus starts to do something. Uh, all of his pieces are brought to the center. The pawns are moved from the initial position so their positions are improved. Of course the, the, the king also moves uh, to f3. It's very close to the center and the queen side is locked as well. So now it's time to strike and Magnus play queen on e6 getting some advantage. So this is how uh, he usually wins his games. We have queen on e6, so uh, Fabiano doesn't have much choice, exchange the, the pieces. Queen on e6, rook on e6, uh, king on f7, and both players uh, have about one minute on the clock. So now, you know, it's 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 just the end game, and who's gonna be better in the end game? We have f5, defending the rook, g takes on f5, g takes on f5, and rook on g8. So trying to operate on the, on the open g file, uh, but now rook on h6, and what to do uh, your pawn is under attack we have king on g7 and here magnus moves infiltrate the the black's position rook on d6 we have rook on f8 now attacking f5 king f4 and now d3 running with the the pawn and asking magnus what you gonna do about that uh, magnus play knight on c7 very good move now creating the threat of winning the exchange but also attacking the pawn we have rook on c8 attacking the the knight knight on e6 king f7 and now rook d3 so uh, taking this pawn uh, and now knight on e7 uh, and here magnus actually has a really great advantage the engine actually shows plus four more than plus four uh, and what magnus magnus has couple of of ways to win that game uh, so the best way, uh, the, the, I think the most clear way, would be knight on d8. And now wherever this king moves, it's just losing. So for example, king on e8, knight b7, winning the pawn, okay? And after rook on c4, king g5, and going after this pawn. King on f8, trying to defend, but rook d8, king g7, and now f6 winning this winning this knight so uh king on e8 not really the greatest idea king g7 maybe staying here and you know it's it looks pretty good but rook on d7 rook on d7 and now uh, attacking the the knight how to do now rook on c4 yes you can win this um this pawn but king e5 uh king f8 defending the knight but now knight on e6 with check uh, and now f6 again winning the knight and the rook doesn't have any any checks here okay because because the knight you know controlling c5 so also not this way uh king on g8 maybe it also doesn't work but this would be more sneaky because white would have to find the move c5 
c5 with the idea if the if the rook takes on c5 uh, then rook on g3 only then rook on g3 and after king on f8 knight e6 winning the winning the rook okay king f7 and knight c5 so uh, so only only this way uh, and there are no better moves here so actually uh, that that would be that would be knight on d8 would be a really great move however magnus play knight on g5 he has different idea the problem is this move is still winning the problem is magnus uh plays that with the intention of moving king on e5 and push forward which doesn't work because king on e8 was played by fabiano caruana and now magnus is still winning but he has to find the move rook on d4 rook on d4 very easy move just just defend the pawn it's 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 just it's just obvious for for maybe everybody but in this case magnus carlsen have his mind fixed with the you know moving um, the king in the center closer grab more, more space uh, and then help these pawns to to get promoted so now uh, what is the deal with the rook on d4 because it looks like you know a uh, pretty normal and obvious move uh, what black can play knight on c6 attacking the rook the problem is rook on e4 you have to move the king if you move on on this side king on d7 uh, then f6 and this pawn gonna march okay you can play something like h6 kick the kick the knight but knight h7 uh, and this pawn gonna march and promote so maybe knight on d8 but then you have king f8 then winning this pawn and this is completely winning for for white also the king can support the the march of the pawn so uh not possible rook on c5 uh, also doesn't work because rook on d8 okay rook on d8 and after king on d8 you get the material back uh, king on d7 now another check king c6 uh, and now knight e4 and this king gonna just you know pick up the pawn again for example h6 f6 knight g6 you cannot do anything king g4 and you just gonna march there knight h8 let's say king h5 knight f7 defending maybe this way uh but that's end you cannot defend more uh, knight e5 king h6 and of course with this two passed pawn uh white gonna win uh, and finally if h6 immediately still knight on e4 uh, winning the game this is the threat very very simple threat uh, for example rook on c6 that makes some sense uh, but still knight on d6 gonna be played king f8 and now knight b7 winning these pawns on this side so wherever the king goes uh, white always can you know win the pawns on another side rook c7 now rook d8 and uh, and now again there are so many threats all the time and black just doesn't have the space to react uh, on all of these threats so uh, definitely white gonna gonna win if play rook on d4 magnus goes for king King on e5 king on e5 it looks like okay very very active move uh, but there is nothing over there because black gonna win couple of pawns now rook on c5 with check attacking the pawn on c4 but also on f5 now this pawn is attacked twice we have king on e6 by magnus carlsen it looks pretty scary uh, for example rook on d7 and you know win the win the knight of course knight can move so it's not really a threat uh, but knight on f5 it's moved already uh, knight on e4 and now knight g7 with check uh, king on d6 attacking the rook and now rook on c four and now fabi has more pawns we have king on e5 and now rook a4 so look at this <laughs> fabi has two extra pawns of course it's temporary because knight on d6 now with check uh, king on e7 knight on b7 and now rook h4 going after that pawn uh, rook on a3 now going after this pawn and here fabi play rook on h6 so we have this square where you know both rooks protects and and attacks them the other pawns uh, we have knight on c5 now by magnus carlsen rook on h5 with check king on d4 and now a5 rook on a5 and here uh, fabiano caruana just goes straight for the draw knight on e6 uh forcing to exchange the knights but of course cannot take because the rook is hanging so uh have to move the king king on c4 and now knight on c5 
rook on c5 and now rook h3 and this is of course theoretical draw but players still make couple of moves uh, these moves were completely blitz uh, even maybe pre-moved king on d4 king on f6 king on e4 uh, king on g6 king on f4 rook on h5 now and after exchanging uh, king on g3 and we have king h2 just couple more moves king h1 and once the the king is on h1 that means this is a draw uh with the pawn on the on the a or h file so so we still have king on g5 king g1 king h5 king h1 and players agreed for a draw so very exciting first game and very unexpected you know Magnus Carlsen just play f3 king f2 in the final of clutch international very very creative and he got the better position he got the winning position but he missed I watched already what happened in the game number two uh, it was also a draw and then Magnus Carlsen won in game number three that was a brutal game however he proved that that was you know accident that in game number one he just draw uh, we had the game number four where Fabiano Caruana man to uh, to come back to the to the to the equal score and then again clutch game number five and Magnus uh, you know uh, won the game uh, very confidently you know uh, really impressive winning and then in game number six Magnus Carlsen was also winning was also winning however he was very low on time he missed the the winning uh, continuation and he lost the game in the in the end game so this is the score 4-2-4 and if you see this game is pretty unexpected that's Magnus Carlsen really dominate in most of the games just he couldn't capitalize uh, all the victories and yeah we have 4-4 so very exciting tomorrow day two and then a great final another six games pretty soon I'm gonna show you uh, just another game from this grand final so stay tuned and if you don't want to miss another video press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one